Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to performance tune your model with reducing the size of it and what are the steps you can use to reduce the size of it uh, very easily. This is one of the important things you need to do with your Power BI files after a while. Let's go and check how this can be done. Reducing the size of a Power BI file is one of the most important things you can do uh, with your Power BI files because when it is smaller, it will load in Power BI Desktop faster, it will perform faster. Uh, so you should try to reduce the size as much as possible. Uh, one of the ways that you can reduce the size is find out how much space each of these columns actually consume in a Power BI uh, model because Power BI is a column uh, column storage uh, style. Uh, for example, here you can see that I have a file, this model file, which is almost 72 uh, megabyte uh, in terms of the size. Uh, and this is my file. Now in this file, I don't have any visualization just for the sake of this example, I want to show it. Uh, now, one of the ways I can find out which columns are consuming more space is that you can install Power BI Helper. It's a free tool. Uh, the link to download it is downloaded in, in the description below. It's a tool we have developed to help you to develop uh, your Power BI reports. You can easily download it, install it for free, and then go to the external tools, open it from there, or from the start menu, open it. When you open Power BI Helper, you can uh, choose to connect to the model. This will connect to all the Power BI existing files, and you will choose which file you want to look into. In this case, I'm looking at this file only, and the information of the files, tables, columns, calculations, this tool, helps you to do a lot of things. Uh, the one that we are going to explore in this video is uh, is the size of the model. When you connect it to the model, when you go to the modeling advice tab here, you'll see some relationships, but the most important part is here, this section that tells us how much size each of these columns um, spent in the memory. Now this size is in megabyte and this is the size, but this is not the size of the Power BI file. For example, it doesn't mean that this column, the sales order number in the fact internet sales is taking 52 megabyte. It doesn't mean that uh, that much of the file size in the file storage. It means when it is expanded in the memory, but it is already ordered based on the size. And you can definitely say that this column consumes a big part of the size um, of that file. So if this column is a column that I don't need, normally one of the first actions is that when you see a column that you don't need and it is taking a lot of size, you can easily go to the Power BI desktop, find that column and uh, remove it. In this case, let's say I don't really need this. So I'm going to delete it. You can delete it here or in Power Query, both will, will be the same. Another thing that I would do, the second step I would do is to check for uh, some uh, date default date table. For example, this one uh, and these two and these four. And if we go down, we'll see a lot of others. Uh, their space is not that much, but you see a lot of these. Uh, whenever you see these local date table, these are the default date table created by Power BI. Power BI does that just to help you to analyze your data much easier, much faster, rather than bringing your custom date table, configuring it, and things like that, which can be helpful for a lot of uh, models that you create as a proof of concept, easy to use, create it really fast. But when you move more towards uh, developing a bigger model, when you have so many dates filled in your model, when the range of those dates are very wide, uh, then the default date table can, uh, can have some side effect. One of them might be the size of the model. In those cases, normally, ideally, you would create a custom date table. I have explained about that in another video and blog. Links is in down in the description below. Uh, in this case, let's say I want to get rid of those. I already have a date table in my model, dim date, but this model is still using the default date table anyway. Uh, I can go to the file, 
options and settings and options. And here I can disable the default date table under current file data load. I can disable the auto date time. This will make sure that this uh, file uh, will not use the default date table. It will use that custom date table. Now, if I just uh, save this file with another name in the same place after change, I would call it. Uh, then you can see uh, how much the size of this model changed. So here is the model before change, 72 megabyte. Here is the model after change, like 48 megabyte, more than 30% size decrease with just those two things we have done. Uh, it really depends on uh, how many unused columns you have and, and things like that. I'm going to show you another example this time. This example will be a little bit different. Let's say I'm opening this file. Now I don't really have time to go and check uh, is all of my columns have been used or not. Uh, Power BI Helper can actually help me to find those columns that are not used, not in a visualization directly, not in a calculation that leads to a visualization. That means if I remove those columns, uh, it will not impact my model, everything would work. Uh, they are not even used in a, in a relationship or anything like that. Here I have a Power BI file with these uh, visuals um, and um, this is my model, some tables and things like that. When I go to the external tool and I open Power BI Helper and connect to this model, uh, so the first thing is uh, I see that in this model I still have under modeling advice I still have the default date table I can get rid of those uh, easily. Uh, the second thing uh, let me go let me first get rid of that default date table in this case, uh, which is under options and settings current file. I get rid of that. After doing this I can actually connect to this model again, which is more like a refresh connected to that. Now those date tables are gone. Now under the visualization tab, this is the place that I see all the visuals pages. In this case, I have one page, three visuals, fields used in the visual. And there's a very important section that says what fields are not used in visuals and can be deleted. If I select that, these are fields that are not directly used in a visual, they are not used in a calculation that is used in a visual as well, and they are not used in a relationship. So they are pretty much safe to be uh, deleted. I can right click and say select all. And there are so many fields as you can see from so many tables and right click delete. Uh, this tool automatically generate a backup of that, which is really helpful because then I don't really um need to uh, worry about what happens if something goes wrong. Uh, so I'm going to save that backup. So those are deleted. If I go back to my model, uh, those files, uh, those um, columns are gone. When I go and save this as after change, we will see in a second that how much size decrease we had this time. You can see that from almost two and a half megabyte, we are down to half megabyte, which is more, uh, which is something like 80% uh, reduce in the size. This can help you a lot in reducing your the model size uh, a lot. Uh, so basically, these are tips that you can use to reduce the file size uh, based on some best practices. And Power BI Helper is here to help to do that much easier. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI and AI. Thank you.